No further information. What's up, man? Hello. You all right? Some uh, vapor. Oh, just me. This appears to be a mime, a street performer. What did he hit you with? Uh, the hand. A hand? Yeah. Okay. Who does things like that? I mean, he was not hurting anyone. Come this way, Come buddy. On, let's go get you some stitches. Hey. He's with it, he knows what happened, but he's probably gonna need a CT scan to make sure there's nothing inside of his head that we can't see going on. Okay. We're gonna take care of it, boo. I just wanna bandage this so it stops bleeding, okay? I'm gonna take this off just for a second. Yeah, I work in the homeless uh, program too. We learn that he is very active with the police department. He's a volunteer. He volunteers to help the homeless. Where are you having tingling at? Right here. Yeah, you gotta big wound right there, okay? But everything else looks okay. Can you tell me what happened? Uh, three guys were, like, intoxicated. Mm -hmm. All I knew it was I was hit. Am I going to have stitches? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. You going to see them tomorrow with stitches? Yes. yes. You going to Officer Halloween's funeral? Me too. Do I, do I have to wear a bandage? I don't have to wear a bandage. You probably will. We're all upset, and we're all trying to process this loss in our own way. Even though Officer Holloway is gone, and he won't see what you're wearing, this guy's worried about stitches. I'm wearing stitches to a funeral. I don't know, it just it goes to show you how much it just impacts everyone. doing the mom thing for 30 years, volunteers for the homeless shelter, and somebody gonna pop him in the face. And they didn't even try to rob him. I know. He has all of his money, all of his cards, his they ID, just, everything. They just hit him just because. Just because. It just makes you angry inside, you know? Just too much right now for the city of New Orleans. Yep. It's too much. There's my girl right there. Oh, God. Oh, well, mama. What's up, little mama? Tell her we're running. Huh? Ten bucks, huh? Oh, money. <laughs> <laughs> little mama, she's a local who can almost always be found on 7th Avenue. Hey, you doing all right? Yeah. You behaving yourself? You being good? Yeah. She's one of those people you just try to help, try to give her a couple dollars here and there, encourage her to stay out of trouble. You safe? You doing good? You got a place to stay tonight? I'm not worried about it. I'll wait mm -hmm. till next Wednesday. Yeah? Yeah. Well, listen, we got to get out of here. You behave yourself, OK? And be safe, all right? Yeah, behave yourself, OK? <laughs> She's just kind of somebody that we've adopted. I can't help but love her. She goes, hey, I need $10. I know. Like, what? She goes, last time it was at five. least five. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid heart rate acknowledged. Rescue 4 responded. Engine 4 is calling for us to check out a patient who has a rapid heart rate after being attacked in Ybor City. Rescue 4 is on scene. What's up? Heart rate cranking at 160. He was here hanging out, offering money for sex. He said no, so they'd be alone. Where's your shirt, man? He ripped it off me. I don't want sex. He got mad. I was jumped at all of them. I was kicked in the back. And that's how I went down. They were like, you're has a <laughs> homeless lady helping. Oh, little mama? The real small girl? Yeah. Yeah, it's little mama. mama. I know her. Little mama, save the day. I'm a day. I'm going to put this around your head real quick, all right? It's just oxygen. It's going to help you breathe a little bit better, all right? Right now, you've got a pretty fast heart rate. So we'll just try to relax a little bit, take some deep breaths. 
we want to go through his vital signs, make sure that he's stable. He does have a high heart rate in the 150s. Rescue for transport one patient. We do need to ask him about drug use. We're not trying to embarrass him or make him feel ashamed, but we need to make sure he's not having a cardiac episode. Now you're trying to break me. Can I do anything yeah, about right. that? I can't do anything about a police report or anything like that. But we can get you set up to where you can talk to somebody who can do something about it, all right? But right now, I'm just worried about your heart rate. Take some deep breaths, nice, slow, nice and easy. Do you have any other recreational drugs tonight? No. Any chance that you were spiked, drugged, anything like that? No, I didn't make an club. At this point, we're recognizing that he's going through a traumatic situation, and that's why his heart rate is elevated. Anxiety can do that. My main objective is just to calm him down, get the heart rate down. OK. Yeah. Just take some deep breaths, nice, slow, nice and easy. In through your nose, out through your mouth, right? Nice, deep breaths. We're pulling in now, OK, buddy? You need to file the report and get a no contact order, get a rest uh, restraining order on him. I admire him for not being afraid to file a report against his attackers. It'll be all right, man. A lot of people do not want to press charges when these things happen. Your heart rate's slowing down a little bit, so that's good. Your blood pressure's down, so just calming down a little bit's helping you out there. Prognosis is pretty good. He does have a few bumps and bruises. Physically, he's going to be OK. That was a very emotional call. I'll tell you what my heart rate would be if so my heart would be like 220. <laughs> that's my boy. Yeah, that's crazy stuff right there, dude. You don't need to be tormented like that, you know? A lot of times, victims of sexual abuse are afraid or embarrassed to come forward. It's never OK to be treated that way, and I'm glad he asked for help. I'm glad we were there for him. All right, let's go see if little mama's standing out there. She's I'm probably ready to fight now, dude. Oh, yeah, she's all She's like, I was going to whoop somebody. <laughs> There she is. Good there girl. she is. Hey, little mama. Come here. What's up, baby? You see that guy get in a fight down there on 15th? Yeah. He said that you saved yeah. him. Yeah. Could have been a hero, little mama. <laughs> she was able to scare off his attackers tonight, so I guess you could say little mama was his little angel. Are you behaving yourself? You doing good? <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> <last time. laughs> All right, mommy, I'll see you later. I can't help but love her. I don't know why. Thirty-two, thirty-two. Fifty-year-old male asthma attack on the steps of the Church of St. Catherine. My asthma and COPD is acting up. I'm having a hard time breathing. Okay. And my medicine isn't working. Okay. It ended up being David, one of our regulars. Whenever you're ready, brother who I've been picking up for five years now. Just have a seat. Relax your arm. He does have respiratory issues, and I think he has coded once or twice before. But assess him, realize he's not having any shortness of breath issues. We just want you to be chill, man, that's all. He's going to be just fine. Yeah, and I know I, I stink. I've been sweating my ass off. I was out playing music over there. I play Benny Whistle. We just want to get this patient to the hospital, and they'll probably let him sleep there for a little while and feed him and send him on his way. That was beautiful, David. I play him all for my wife. Where is she? I haven't seen her in a while. She died a month ago. What? Really? I'm sorry to hear that. The last time I saw her, she was in bad shape. We've also treated his wife very frequently as well. I still can't believe she's gone. I'm sorry, David. I, I had no idea. I wouldn't have asked about it. I'm really sorry. We were married for two years. I remember when y'all met. All right, we got a male that's been shot. He's supposed to be in a red car. PD's on scene. Oh, there, uh, there he is. Hard. The car is just riddled with bullet holes. 
I see the victim in a kneeling position. There's a pool of blood. <sighs> so I throw the monitor on him, and he's pulseless. He wasn't breathing. Get your stretcher. He was in a pulseless electrical activity rhythm. The heart is not beating, but there's still electricity going to the, through the heart. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. He was in PEA of like 58, baby. Don't worry about all that. This is where that life before limb comes in. I'm not worried about securing his head in case his neck is burnt. I'm not worried about all of that. Hold up, baby, hold up. We need to start CPR and get him to the trauma center. Not too high, not too high, not too high. We have 10 minutes to get all that done. 10 minutes or less. All right, baby, let's get that on. Get that oral airway in. There you go. This is someone's child, you know? This is someone's brother, someone's dad. So we just have to do everything possible to save this guy. All right, now we in the, we in the cords now. Go ahead, bag him, baby. Keep bagging him till we tell you. Where's he shot? Uh, just through the left thigh, that's it. Left thigh, that was it, that's all we found? Hmm, all right, baby. Hey, Dr. Garden, right with about a 22-year-old male. He's got a only gunshot wound we could find was to his left thigh. Pulseless, apneic. He was in a PEA rhythm of 54 when we got to him. Uh, they about maybe five or six minutes out. Even though it doesn't look good, there is still some electricity going through his heart. If anything's gonna save him, it's gonna be surgery for traumatic injuries. It must have hit that femoral artery. It had to. Yeah, they shot him with something big. Do you think it was an AK that shot him? Oh, yeah. You go through that car like that? Mm-hmm. That'd make you bleed out quick. Right. Billy Knight, huh? I found out this morning that the patient we treated last night for a gunshot wound to his thigh did not survive his injuries. His family is participating in the second line. You know, down here, we, we celebrate life and we celebrate death. I just want to show support to not only the family, but the community that, you know, we're all in this together. Hey, hey, I'm Keely. Oh, I'm, I'm doing, oh my God, you how so you doing? Much. I wish we could have did more. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. Y'all are out here for a good cause, though. How you doing? You're doing okay? I'm trying. I hear you. Taking it one day at a time, but thank you so, so much for all the efforts to do whatever you can do to save them. I really appreciate you. This was the first time in 15 years I've ever met the family of one of my patients that died from a violent crime. So it, it was nice, and it was something really different, and it really touched me and meant a whole lot to me. You going to march with us? Yeah, if y'all are marching, I'm down. She says she down. I'm down. <laughs> I would like to. <laughs> The city loves second lines, but we want to make it to where the second lines are for happy occasions, you know, birthday parties, weddings. The second lines for the victims of violence far outnumber the happy second lines, and that's got to stop. I've been doing this a long time, and it's been going on in the city for longer than I've been in EMS. I, I just want the violence to stop at some point in time. Something, something has to give. Be safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're gonna bleed to death. Grand <sighs> the knife, grand the knife. No, they're not dead. I can work with that.